we are in chapter 10. We are in section 10.1, but 10.1 and 10.2 overlap. They go together. This is going to be a different section for us to do. We end up jumping to 10, and then we'll go back and pick up chapter 4. But because we're jumping, we can't do all of the content in here, but yet it fits very well after chapter 3. So because of that, what you're going to see is kind of piecemeal, but I try to write in some directions of how it all goes together and how to keep up with what's going on. But I felt like I needed to make another video in addition to what you'll see in the book and from a, a, a fellow professor. And what she has uploaded is a very long, good video for both 10.1, 10.2. So just make sure you read the directions very well that I'm sending along with these videos. But what I want to do is to just hit some highlights. And so we're looking at page 452 and 10.1. And the piece I want to point out is that when they have mentioned independent and dependent, I just want to throw in input and output. Input and output are another way to think of, I'm going to put in my X values and they will generate my Y values, input, output. And another thing I want to mention is that Almost every time that you have something mentioned with time, like years, minutes, days, it's going to go on the x-axis. I wanted to show you at the top of 543, when you see information about these scatter, scatter plots, that is going to be on test 1. I also wanted to show and share that procedure for drawing a scatter plot is going to be on our first test. And then to remind you that we do have Chapter 10 Review uploaded where I've mentioned it's uploaded in our notes. I wanted to also look over here at the bottom of 545. You see all of this stuff, and it's going to get gone through very well between Professor Hohertz and the, um, the, the author of the book, which those are the videos embedded in our textbook. But I wanted to point out two things because it cannot be said enough that correlation does not mean causation. And I would write that at the top of almost every page that you're writing notes on for this section. Correlation does not mean causation. Things can have a correlation, but they really don't cause one or the other. And then whenever you're looking at your correlation, correlation coefficient, you're going to hear a lot of information about it being between 1 and negative 1, and the closer to 0 is meaning no relationship. But the closer to either positive or negative 1, there's an extremely strong, and even at the extremes, a perfect relationship. So this is just a small guide on some ways to think about what is strong, what is very strong, what is weak. But you're going to hear information and people's opinions all over the place. So here's just a small guide that if something's at like 80 cents to a dollar, like over here at 80 cents to a dollar or negative 80 cents to a dollar, you might want to call that a very strong correlation. And maybe if it's like 50 cents to 80 cents or negative 50 to negative 80, you could call it strong. And then let's go in a little bit more to the zero, maybe like 30 cents to 50 cents or negative 30 to negative 50, we'll call it weak. And then if it's right here hovering around zero cents, like zero to 30 cents or zero to negative cents, we could call it very weak. But sometimes my students are like, how do I know what to call it? Well, you kind of guess, but that, kind of, that guide can kind of help you to feel like you're guessing um, uh, with an educational guess. I'm now on page 546, and I'm going to bring back in some more scatter plots, but now they have correlation coefficients on them. I wanted to go through a question um, really to help you know and reiterate and make sure you know. I am looking at example 10-4 on page 548. You are not responsible for this formula. You are not responsible for calculating correlation coefficient by hand. But what you are responsible for is knowing how to calculate that inside your TI calculator or by using a website and then you're not even going to do that for the test but you do need to know how to do that and practice that on the homework. So I wanted to do a demonstration and show you 
how to use the formula that you're going to find in the instructor notes and you'll see all of those directions in my notes and in um, the places that we send you like connect math or d2l and i just wanted to show you how i'm going to put this information in there so i'm going to pause the video and i'm going to go to this website and then i want you to see me plug these pieces of information in and then how i'm getting a correlation coefficient I'm recording again, and I hope that you can see the screen that has the website at the top of alcula.com, etc. And that was on the piece of paper that I showed you earlier, and it will be in your notes that I'll send to you this week. But I wanted to show you here that when uh, Professor Hohertz does her video, hers looks a little different than the one that comes up when I type in that website. So I am looking on page 548, where I just left you, and I'm looking at number of absences, X, and the final grade, Y. And so I'm going to go type in my X, comma, the Y, hit return. X, comma, the Y, hit return. You get the idea. So I'm going to keep typing these in. And I should be double-checking them, and I'm doing them kind of haphazardly right now, just to get them in there quickly. But I guess I could pause, but nah, let's just keep going. So I've put in all of the pieces of data from the chart that I was just showing you on example 10-4. It is asking for us to find the correlation coefficient. I told you then, I will reiterate it several times, you are not responsible for calculating that. But on the homework, you do get to play with it a little bit, but you will not generate one for the test. So as you see here, it says enter the values. I wanted you to see that, and then I'm going to click Submit Data. When I submit, uh-oh, and then it tells me wrong format. Okay, I'm going to hit pause and double check it because it worked a while ago when I did it. Okay, let me hit pause. I'll be right back. So I'm right back. I didn't change anything because I wanted you to see this. I have a period here instead of a comma. So I'm going to click in, erase the dot, put in a comma, and I think that's going to fix it. So let's try Submit Data again, and there it is. You'll notice up here it gives us the correlation coefficient, the R, and it's a negative 0.944. So jot that down, negative 9, or 0.944, and then I'm going to pause the video and then go back to our textbook. So I'm back at the textbook. I want to point out just a couple more things. You will have this website. You will be asked in the homework to find the correlation coefficient. I put all of these x values and I did 6, 82, 2, 86. I did all of these values. I did not do any of this over here. I did not do any of this. I just hit give me some information and it popped up negative 0.944 and then a whole lot more. To three decimal places it's a negative 0.9. Using our criteria a while ago, negative 0.9 like 0.90 or 90 cents. If you're looking down here, a negative 90 is darn close to a negative 1, and that's between 80 cents and 9 and a dollar. So we can say that this correlation coefficient is a very, very strong correlation. And here it just says a strong negative linear, and that, that again, you're going to have different people say different things. But it, it is nice to be able to throw in very strong or just strong. But again, it will be very uh, fluid and flexible uh, based on the situation and based on how people will interpret it. So this finishes what I want to mention to you on 10.1.